And this type of approach that we are following now of postulating that there is a social planner, or figuring out what the social planner would do, is very typical in macroeconomics and in what's called uh, macro public finance, which is a branch of macroeconomics that focuses on public finance issues, so basically issues of designing policies. Uh, so it's very common to postulate that there is a social planner and try to figure out what the social planner would do, and that gives you an idea of what's the best possible policy to implement. All right, so let's pose the social planner problem, uh, which is uh, trying to figure out what this benevolent social planner wants to do, and then let's solve that problem, and that would give us a way to characterize the uh, optimal, uh, efficient unemployment rate. So, so our social planner wants to maximize something. The thing that you want to maximize as a social planner is uh, output, right? Because we said that given the assumption we made, the only thing that's going to maximize welfare in the economy is actually its level of output. So you want to maximize output, which we've called Y. And what you pick to maximize it, so at a certain level, what you're going to pick is to pick the number of vacancies that we can call V. Okay, because that's really the only decision you can make. Once you pick vacancy, everything else is determined. Okay, now, two things to notice. So first thing to notice is that Y, uh, the level of output, you know, it's given by the production function that looks something like this. A and, you know, alpha, it, can, it may well be uh, concave. Okay, where n is the number of producers. So here what you can see is that if you want to maximize y, what you want to maximize is the same as maximizing n. Okay, because if you maximize the number of producers, you're going to maximize your output. That's the first thing to notice. Second thing to notice is that, <coughs> you know, once you determine v in the matching model, you know, everything else follows. So uh, picking V is exactly the same as, say, picking uh, theta the type test, because once you impose that there's a matching function, that flows are balanced, uh, you know, everything is going to follow, everything is going to have a one-to-one -one relationship. So if you pick a vacancy, it's just mathematically, it's equivalent to picking a type test. Once you've picked a type test, there's only one vacancy, the level of vacancy that's consistent with that, right? So, um, so we can say that. So what we've said is that picking V is the same as picking theta, and then what we've also said that maximizing output is the same as maximizing the number of producers. So the social planner's problem, you can rewrite it equivalently as maximizing theta, or maximizing over theta, the number of producers. So basically picking the tightness to maximize the number of producers. Uh, but now the number of producers, Actually, what's nice with this formulation is that it's only a function of theta. And so now it's very simple. We're just trying to maximize the function of one variable. How do we know that? Well, it's because what is the number of producers in your economy? Well, your number of producers is the total number of workers in the economy. And we know that the number of workers in the economy, if we just take as given the matching function, and the flows on the labor market, we know that actually the number of workers in your economy is directly given by the labor supply, right? So the labor supply is a function that gives you, uh, for a given tightness, the number of people who have a job if you just impose that there is, that flows are balanced and that there is a matching function, which is exactly the assumptions under which we're operating here. So LS of theta, that gives you the number, that gives you the employment level in the economy. Um, but that's not the same as the number of producers. You know that, in fact, the number of producers is related to the total number of workers by L is equal to 1 plus tau of theta N. By definition, where tau is our recruiter producer ratio. Okay, so we, we've seen we've seen that that's by definition. This is saying that 
L is equal to N, number of producers, plus tau times N, but tau times N is just the number of recruiters. So this, this equation here that I've just written, this is just saying if you want that number of workers, people who are employed is equal to producers, plus recruiters. So this is just saying that workers are split between producing and recruiting, okay? that, which is how firms are organized in this economy. Okay, um, so we know that the number, if you, the link between the number of producers and the number of workers, that L is one plus tau of theta times N. So now if I want to have N, what I can do is take the labor supply, which gives me the number of workers, and then divide it here by 1 plus tau of theta. And that's going to give me an employment divided by 1 plus tau of theta, that's going to give me a number of producers. So what I want to maximize is this, ls of theta divided by 1 plus tau of theta. Okay, and um, Right, so that's just a function of theta that has to be uh, that has to be maximized. Okay, so I want to maximize it. I have this function. How do I find the maximum of a function? Well, I know that a, a necessary condition is that the derivative of the function is zero, right? So we basically want that, you know, if I call, let's say I call this G of theta, just to, intro, to simplify notation a bit, what we want is that DG D theta is equal to zero. Right, that's our necessary condition for maximization. The derivative has to be equal to zero. We have to have a critical point of our function. You know, graphically, uh, you know, it, what we're saying is something like this. If I have theta here and I plot my function g, I know that the highest point is going to be here, and the way I know that it's the highest point is that the slope of the function here is equal to zero. Okay, that's that's the max. Right, you know that's how you find the maximum of functions. Uh, so you, the necessary condition is that your derivative is zero, and then if you know that your, if your function is well behaved, you know if it's uh, concave, uh, then you know that you found actually like, your unit maximum. Uh, okay, so we want the derivative to be zero. Now it turns out that this function g that we've just introduced, you know, it's a little bit tricky. You have uh, something in the numerator, you have something in the denominator, and actually. A way to kind of get out of this trickiness is instead of looking for a derivative, you know the derivative of a ratio, it's always a bit painful. We're going to look, we're going to transfer everything and think about elasticities. Right? Uh, and in fact, we, we have results on elasticities that we'll be able to use. So I need to find my derivatives that the derivative has to be equal to zero. But setting the derivative equal to zero is just the same as saying that theta over g dg d theta is equal to zero, right? This is just exactly the same. I've just multiplied this thing by some uh, by some ratio theta over g. But you recognize that theta over g d, dg d theta is just the same as saying that d log g d log theta is equal to zero. And so this is just, in fact, exactly the same as saying that the elasticity of our function g with respect to theta has to be equal to zero. So in fact, here I'm going to translate my um, condition of the derivative by a condition on the elasticity. These two conditions are equivalent. I'm just doing that because computing the elasticity here would be much simpler than computing the derivative because I'm dealing with ratios and, and such things. Okay? So to find the maximum of our function that we have called g, we need to find the point where its elasticity is zero. Okay? So how do I find that point? Uh, so what is the elasticity of g with respect to theta?
where the function g is introduced above. So we know that the elasticity of the ratio is the difference of the elasticity, right? So the elasticity of g with respect to theta is the elasticity of this thing here. Okay? So it's going to be the elasticity of L s with respect to theta minus the elasticity of 1 plus tau with respect to theta, right? Because uh, elasticity of ratio, it's like the same laws as a log as a loss for log, it's a difference of the elasticities. Okay? Great. Now the elasticity of 1 plus tau with respect to theta, we've already derived it when we looked at elasticity. This what we've seen is that it's equal to eta. When you know we have a Cobb Douglas matching function, which I should have said, but we're going to assume here. Uh, let, me, let me add that in our assumptions. I should have said that's going to be much simpler at all. So we're going to use always a Cobb Douglas matching function, which is you know a realistic assumption and one that's very commonly used. Okay. So under our Cobb Douglas assumption, we had we had seen that one plus tau with respect to theta, the elasticity was eta times tau of theta. That was the elasticity here. And what we had also seen is that the elasticity of Ls with respect to theta. So you remember Ls, kind of just as an aside. The labor supply is f of theta divided by s plus f of theta h, where h is the size of the labor force, which is um, fixed. So the elasticity of Ls with respect to theta is just the same as the elasticity of this thing here with respect to theta. So it's the elasticity of f divided by s plus f with respect to theta. And this we, we, had, um, we had seen what that was. This elasticity, we had said that it was 1 minus eta times u of theta. So both of these things are things that we derived when we introduced elasticity when we looked at um, unemployment fluctuations. Okay, and it's something that you can very easy to prove, so right? you can do it as, a, as an exercise. Um, all right, so the elasticity of this function g that we've just introduced with respect to theta is just going to be 1 minus eta u of theta minus eta tau of theta. Okay, and so, uh, and so then the solution to the uh, social planner problem, we now, we now have it. It was quite simple. And the solution to the social planner's problem, of course, it's the tightness uh, in the theta that maximizes um, social welfare. That's what we are looking for. We are looking for the tightness. You know, if you have your social, your benevolent social planner, it's going to pick a tightness, you know, by posting the right number of vacancies to maximize social welfare, which is just the same here as maximizing output, and which is again the same as maximizing the number of producers. So this is the solution to the social planner problem. It's given by, so it's given by the point where the elasticity is zero. The elasticity is just this thing here that we've computed. So it's going to be given by one minus eta u of theta is equal to eta tau of theta. That's the point that's going to bring your, your elasticity to zero. And this I can just rewrite it as u of theta divided by tau of theta is equal to eta over 1 minus eta. That's going to be my condition. 